They really brighten up the city's nights in the islands, and they're very interesting because you can also make moving pictures by having two pictures and flopping between the two. And you can do the same, not with neons, but with this stuff. Off cuts of perspex, which is a hard plastic you have to scratch with a very sharp nail, like that. Well, what does it do? First of all, don't ever try this with glass. You'll simply cut yourself. Remain uh, with the perspex, and that'll be much safer. It's expensive, but off cuts are fairly easily obtained. It takes light through it, just the way glass does, like that, but it has this surprising effect. If I put the torch on the edge and shine it along, and shine it through, you notice it doesn't come through to your eye, but it does make the other edge glow, like that. In fact, the light seems to be almost trapped in the glass, or the perspex, until it comes out. And that's really the case. If I show you on a diagram, you can see what's happening. Light rays coming in through the edge really bounce around inside. They reflect off those flat surfaces as if they were mirrors. And they're trapped inside there until they come to the other edge and they try and come out. And that's what makes it glow. That's why you see it. And if we scratch all over there and put the torch on it and drop the lights down again, you'll notice that design glows, rather like the edge of the perspex. Why does it do that? Well, again, another diagram should show you. The light bounces around in just the same sort of fashion until it hits that scratch. And when it does that, it's thrown into all sorts of directions. Some of those come up to your eye, and so you see the scratch and consequently any design that's been scratched in there. Well, how do we use that to make the neon? First of all, if you want two pictures at least, you'll need to get a perspex piece and cut it into two. And cutting perspex can be done with a saw, but if you're careful, it can be done like this too. Get a ruler, hold it in the right position, take your very sharp nail and keep going across it. And don't be impatient. Give it 20, 30, 40, even 50 cuts until you've really made a deep impression on that. Otherwise, it's not going to break where you want it to. Whoopsie. That would be a mess up, but we won't go back because we'll lose too much time. There's a good deep gouge there, and we put that on the straight edge of the table, put a hand on top. If you're in doubt, get an adult to help you, but pressing down there should snap it cleanly, like that. And then you've got two pieces to play around with, unless you've scratched yours like mine. Again, don't ever try it with glass. Then all you have to do is to put one design there, put the other one on top of it, you'll be able to see through, and put the second part like this. Well, what can you do? I've done a very crude sort of direction sign here. It's in fact an arrow, I'm going to flash, and the words, this way, I'm going to flash. There's the arrow, and there's the this way. If I combine the two, you can see that that's a composite picture. To control the light, I've blocked off the top of this way. You can see there's masking tape and black on there. The light can't get through there, and it can get through the bottom. But the reverse is true for the arrow. The light can get through the top, but it can't get through the bottom. So if I put them together like that, and if I stick them together so they don't move in relation to each other, plonk them down there, and just for safety, put a couple of cardboard shields to stop any stray light bouncing around, like that, I can put one torch at the top, one torch at the bottom, and if I drop the lights in the room and control the torches, I should be able to flash my sign on and off. Here we go. Arrow, words. Arrow words. Arrow, words. Well, that's a pretty rough one, but it does show that it works. Well, I first saw this in a museum in America, perhaps the most famous museum of all, the Smithsonian. And they were using it to show how blood went around the body. And theirs was a bit like this, rather better, but this sort of principle. There was the heart, and you could only let light in through the side. There were the lung circulation, only let light in through the top. And there was the body circulation, which only lent light in through that side. And of course, it had to have three light sources. So all of those things could be lined up like that, stuck together to stop them moving, masked off with black to stop any stray light getting to your eye. And by using three torches, one at the top, one at each side, like this, one, two, three, with a bit of luck and three hands, you could change the lights around and have a museum display like this. The heart's lit all the time and it flashes between the lungs and the body. Body, lungs. Body, lungs. Body, lungs. And that gives you some of the effect that you can get if you take a bit more time than I have and set them up like that. All you need is perspex, 
something to scratch it, and probably a design for a good switching device. Thank you.